I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Welcome back, everyone. I am the Dungeon Master, and this is Dragons of War. We rejoin the party as they have rested and recuperated and re-energized themselves by stopping at a small little farming hamlet that doesn't even have a name it's just some no-named little collection of a few farmhouses and some fields. You know, maybe uh, somebody knows how to do some basic blacksmithing so that they don't have to go into one of the larger towns all the time so they can, you know, reshoe their horses or fix their plows or, you know, whatever basic blacksmithing they might need, but certainly not you know, the kind of person who would be considered an armor smith or weapon smith or anything like that, you know. We're talking about uh, a very, very tight-knit rural community where it's like, oh yeah, George down there knows how to fix engines, you know. I wouldn't exactly call him uh, a mechanic, though, you know. So um, that that's the type of, of village that you guys find yourselves in. And... As you have been here eating their pumpkin stew, their world famous pumpkin stew, as they'll, you know, describe it, at, at least the uh, older woman who considers herself to be, you know, somewhat of a motherly figure to all of the uh, inhabitants of this very small little farming commune um you know she she will tell you all about how people love her her pumpkin stew and and travelers have 
you know, carried it far and wide, and that's how it's become world famous. Although, you know, Pesci having traveled and Elodie um, having traveled, uh, Lucy having traveled, uh, you know, you guys certainly haven't heard of it. And, you know, Gorakul and Zarash, even though you're kind of from the area, like, you still haven't heard of it. So, you know, all of you kind of look at each other uh, and, you know, have a telepathic uh, conversation with your eyebrows to, you know, say that, um, you know, you, you... We doubt? We doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, but it's food. It 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 fills your bellies, especially for those of you who uh, are more open to vegetarian meals. Uh, Lucy, it's probably not to your liking um, as much, although that is a decision that you can make for your character. But uh, just going off of you being a cat folk, a tabaxi, I, I was going to uh, assume that you would prefer meat. But uh, as you sip the the very pungent squash stew, you know, how how does it go down? Delicious. Hmm. It, tur- it turns out that, uh, you know... You you have a taste for this, and despite not being, you know, fish or chicken or uh, something else that that you would normally, mm-hmm. yeah, it it has a pleasant uh, taste, and you drink it down, um, filling your your belly with its warm broth and and hearty chunks of of basically boiled squash I, I mean that's really what it is but um we i got... imagine i imagine me and ld being the few who have like uh table manners uh well pesci uh being a forest gnome would definitely have the capacity to be a little more primal and finger with his food and all of that, but being a bard of some uh, no small amount of uh, pride and uh, ambition for what he could become, he may also be very well studied in polites and uh, you know other uh, social graces, and so. Um, Pesci, are you able to comport yourself public-wise like a civilized uh, humanoid, or are you a little bit uh, gruffer and harder to, um, you know, be unembarrassed by at the table? Uh, Sam? Uh, yes. Sam. Yeah, I just, I had a brief network outage. It's been resolved. Um, sorry, you were doing your recap and it went out like right in the middle of you explaining something. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I uh, haven't even gotten to like the major recap of everything. I'm just kind of setting the scene. And while we set the scene, I'm getting a chance to give you guys uh, a little bit of depth and layers to your characters that, you know, answer questions that aren't necessarily important, but just, uh, you know, give some uh, three dimensionality to the characters beyond just, well, I'm Lucy, I'm a cat folk who shoots a bow and arrow and I am sneaky. You know, that's that's mm-hmm. great. But now we know that uh, aside from liking all of the things that you would expect, you know, such as fish and all of that, uh, balls of string that are slightly unraveled, 
<laughs> that that Lucy also likes uh, pumpkin flavored stews, and so you know that's a a little tidbit about her. Um, you know, if you've ever had a cat or whatever that liked certain you know other foods, it's like oh yeah, that that cat's weird. It eats these things too, you know, and so it just gives a little bit of flavor to her. And then so for Pesci. Uh, Gabriel Hazard had made the uh, the comment that he imagines that uh, Elodie and Gorakul are the civilized ones at the table. However, my uh, posit is that although um, Pesci may be a forest gnome who grew up in the woods and is perfectly capable of roughing it, and doing some uh, finger food campground type of eating, uh, that being a bard of no small amount of ambition and pride, that he may also have learned all sorts of polities and, and manners in order to be able to fit in with the highest of society who he hopes to one day perform for. Well, also, you know, every now and then, the role calls for impeccable table manners so in those cases pesci has taught himself with the assistance of books and other folks um the proper spoon fork usage at the dinner table when it calls for it yeah and then so really then the only question left is as you sit amongst these simple rural farm folk you know do you do you just dig in like you would if you were in the woods or do you actually you know use your uh whatever utensils you know and and dishes are provided so pesci would take a moment to observe how everyone else is eating and then mimic how they're eating to kind of fit in better to kind of make himself seem more of the folk yeah so these guys use clay bowls that are you know just baked into hardened clay and they fill them up from from the pot just by uh dipping them right into right into the pot fill the bowl uh they take hard chunks of of a very dark bread and dip it right into the stew and and eat the softened bread that way in fact uh most of them take the bread and just set it in the stew and while the stew cools down enough for them to be able to actually eat it the bread soaks a lot of the liquid up and then they kind of drink the the stew out of the bowl before digging uh whatever meaty parts of the squash are left out with a knife or their fingers Pesci mimics them as best he can. Yeah. And then uh, also, you know, just because uh, he brings it up, um, you know, Gorakul does make a point of being very, you know, refined uh, about how he eats. And uh, Elodie growing up, you know, in an elven household, you would have been taught how to do that. But uh, since it has been brought up, each of you is capable of uh, knowing how to eat, you know, with utensils and, and be polite in society. Um, so, you know, it, it really comes down to how you see your character for example zarash could very easily be the kind of bugbear who just tears into his food you know like an animal like straight out of beauty and the beast or he could be a bugbear who tries to hold himself to a higher standard and wipes the stew off of his chin hairs after after each drink so um Let's just go left to right and just uh, a real simple, short answer. Lucy, are you using, you know, extra manners or are you just eating the food as is like most of the farm folk are? 
So I have a tendency to like to eat my food in a way that includes my tongue and sticking it out. And uh, some folks might find it offensive, but you know, it is though. And sometimes I do dip my paw into things. But, uh, but other than that, you know, that, that is my way. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, so you're not, uh, being rude as far as, you know, you're concerned, you're just, uh, eating the way that, that the tabaxi would eat. And, um, it does appear odd to non cat like humanoids, uh, Zarash, uh, you know, like I said, you're a, you're a gruff warrior bugbear, but that doesn't mean that, uh, there's no part of you that could want to fit in with society and you could also not give two figs and and just eat however it goes down something <laughs> hold on am i am i eating i'm slurping the soup very badly i'm just i'm just like He's gobbling slurping. everything up i'm slurping but i'm gobbling because you know i'm a bugbear and i'm hungry and it's just and am i looking around and everybody's staring at me kind of stupidly but you know i'm a bugbear so i'm not really sure i care about that yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, sitting, sitting down, you, you know, take your, your weapons and place them right alongside you and just sit right at the table in your armor and weapons and, and, oh. eat, you know, and, yeah. And, and you're just commenting on everything, talking to everybody and, uh, it, it's, it's messy. Um, you know, but, uh, that's why you're, a uh, goblinoid because you're gobbling the food up. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying <laughs> so it. so uh, <laughs> finally we, we, we come to Elodie who you know as I said you were definitely raised in the kind of environment where you know everything had uh, utensils that aren't even available to you here and uh, you know different glasses would would be brought out uh, rather than just refilling a glass because that was considered you know uh, dirty at that point and and so you know you you grew up very very uh, respectable but you've also been traveling for some time now. So, you know, you've possibly learned to live on the road. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, Elodie has spent much of her life trying to blend in with those around her. So her instinct is like, oh, grab utensils and try to start eating. But as looking around and seeing much of the people around her not doing that, she kind of tests the boundaries, maybe tries doing something with her hands, being like, oh, this is interesting. This is different than I've been used to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it's it's uh, not quite the scene from Hook where where Peter starts to imagine the food and you you just start having the time of your life throwing food around. But getting your hands a, a little bit dirty has given you a a new experience, a, a different perspective. And for an elf who lives as long as, as your elven kind do and experience so many, you know, things it's, it's a important part of, of life to, you know, still be able to experience new things. And so this is a, a thrill for you to to get to do that um especially without any judgment or or scowls from others who would you know look down on you for not following the absolute uh you know manners and charm school you know rules so as you guys are you know eating you also discuss what has been happening and what comes next you discuss how there was the 
half of a meteor that fell and you had went back for it almost uh got it away from some gob some goblins who who had gotten their hands on it uh defeated the goblins before more of them came over the horizon and you guys were forced to you know make a retreat and as you retreated uh you you broke for Cotterheimer uh which um this hamlet is like just outside of you know if if this was the major city you know this is one of the suburbs uh so so um you guys are just outside of Cotterheimer you know like a day or two away and um the stone the meteor has been dragged off by the goblins and orcs and other assorted uh monsters uh but uh you know we won't we won't say that too too loud in front of zarash and <laughs> and, uh, hey, and uh what did you say what yeah. did you say <laughs> and uh so um the the goblins now you know have that but a big force of them also went to go raid some of the other towns and villages since they came so far into green yord the the lands of the vikings uh here um the southern lands of the vikings anyway um the northern lands are just called fragesselmere but regardless uh you guys know that the meteor is headed back east probably towards Kuzrak or you know in that direction and then uh the goblin army is headed west towards uh Brotbyad. and in fact i'll pull up the map right now just to make sure that everybody knows where what what is what? Oh, we're just. Go ahead. Yeah. In in the terms of what we're trying to do, where it seems everyone is sort of like trying that that everyone agrees that we're trying to get into Kota Hemer to to restock and get better stuff before we go head and follow the the goblinoids to find the stolen part of the meteor. That sounds right to me. Yeah, well, yeah. Y- you know, again, we're just kind of, uh, you know, setting the scene here and making sure that everybody is able to follow along with what's going on here. Oops, wrong image. I got so excited, I clicked on the wrong one. Here we go. <coughs> All right, so now you guys can see on Green Yard here, um, Koderheimer, Cotterheimer, it's got to be Cotterheimer because it literally means Catland, uh, is right, right here. And you guys are probably like just here. Um, Brotnabod to the to the south here is where the uh, the uh, goblin army is headed, and then Kuzrak is where the uh, stone is headed. And then you guys want to go to Cotterheimer, which is right above you there. So that gives you like the basic breakdown of where you are, 
where everything is in relation to you and uh, what you might want to do. So now, um, you know, Pesci, even though your character was here uh, as the player, you know, you're caught up and you guys can kind of uh, discuss exactly what you're what you're going to do now uh, as you sit and rest at this farming community. So the stone is on its way to uh, Kuzrak. Correct? Um, Elodie's trying to talk. I was saying something before, but I don't think you guys could hear me. So. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, def it. definitely could not. Please. Yeah, what were you saying? I was just saying that I think we should go to Cotterheimer Restock because it will be a safe location to do so. And then I think... Well, this is this is going to be a, a, a group decision of whether or not we try to defend the one town that we think the goblins are going to, and then go after the stone, or if we just go after the stone. It'll be a long journey to go up to the stone, so we'll probably encounter something anyway. Well, I would think that we could pick up some intelligence if we go into town, right? I mean, do the villagers know anything about the movement of the goblins and, you know, if they're attacking you know, rumors or anything like that? I mean, the other thing is if we go try to defend the other town after we restock, we could um, we could get a sense of how these goblins attack and get like mm -hmm. some something going there. Yeah. Pesci, did you have something to add? So from my understanding, Stone's on its way to Kuzrak. There is an attack plan for Broughton Jod. And we're the closest to Cotterheimer, correct? Yeah, I mean you're kind of equidistant. Uh, you're kind of triangulated right now between Cotterheimer, Brotnabjord, and Steadyord. Okay. Um, and the goblins are the ones that are playing the attack. Um, Brotnabjord, uh, right? Yes. Okay. Do we know? Um, so do we think that, uh, Brotnabjod needs additional troops or backup to fend off the goblin attack? Oh, they're definitely, like, going to get raided and, like, lose men and supplies if they don't have something, yeah. Okay. Do we think that we can get backup from Cotterheimer to assist in the defense of Brotnajad? Do I know anything about the relationship between the two towns? To to get help there in time would be almost impossible as is. And then also what you would know about uh, this is you see the uh, really thick white line between Kuzrak and like Bolheimer, Kat de Mever and and all of that, that that really thick white line is the border of the nation. Um, the orc hordes are to the east of that line. Um, Kuzrak, Agrozada, uh, even Narbyad there is is considered orc territory. Um, but those thinner white lines indicate separations of states or um, what do they call them? Territories? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, provinces. Provinces. Thank you. Uh, those are the different provinces within each of the states. So uh, Greenyard there is is the state that contains the Vikings. The other area is just called uh, the Horde. That's the one that contains the Orcs. But then each of these little areas separated by the white lines is its own earldom ruled by an earl. And the earls of Greenyord and Fragesselmir are like allies, like allies. but... Um, like they fight each other all the time too. 
it's it's a lot like uh, ancient Greece, where at any given point, your neighboring uh, king might be your enemy or your ally, uh, you know, fighting against each other or against a foreign invader. It it, it all just depends. Okay, so uh, Sengoku period of Japan. Gotcha. <laughs> Narish wants to know why all these people named Earl get a chance to run a country. Why can't other people with other names have a chance to run a country? Why yeah. is it all Earl? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, Earl. very prestigious name. Angora. It's just a very prestigious Angora. name. They all share it. Angora Cool just trying to explain to Zeros that Earl is not a name, but a title. Oh. No, no, no. It's funnier this way. Let him think that. <laughs> I am not a liar. I I speak of truth. Okay. Um. Okay. So it sounds like uh, Bratnajad is going to be hit hard. Um, if we decide to go there directly instead of going to Katamer or wherever that city's name is. Um, can we actually contribute something to that? Uh, you can, you can make it there in time. If, if you, if you go to intercept and, and help defend Brotnabjod, but uh, how much help you would be. I, I mean, I can't speak to that. Okay. Um, I think there's a shot if we do go there, and at least like if like the town itself sees us defending it, that we'll be able to get more help from the town afterwards than we would if we were just going to like Katnamir or whatever it is. Kotternheimer. So we're gonna do a little bit of Seven Samurai. Is what we're gonna do, huh? I remember that movie. I'm a bugbear. I saw that movie once. Yeah. Really. <laughs> You're very see, there's a very, very famous play called The Seven Elven Warriors in the land. <laughs> Good job, now, dramatic order. Now, these elves got together against the human hordes to attack back at their destroyed cities. <laughs> so maybe if we come after the city is destroyed, we can find seven Greenyard citizens who are very upset about being treated poorly by these orcs to help us in our attack against them to retrieve the stone. And Gorakul just sort of says, Well, Broughton, I'm, even though Broughton the board is not my uh, hometown to be exact, I wouldn't like to see them utterly wrecked by these goblinoids. All right, so I think we. Come to a consensus here that we're going to go try to defend Rotenbjord. Rotenbjord. Yes. So, uh, like you said, it is not your hometown, but it is where your your house and everything is currently. Uh, so, so Brotnabjord is is the destination, and you guys um, head out you know, after uh, resting, but before um, you, you're you able to, to leave, one of the, one of the villagers uh, comes up to you and, and he says that his name is Roland and he has... Always. And he's headless. Sorry. <laughs> uh, he, has, he, has, he has always, you know, dreamed of, of leaving this, this small farming community and, you know, being a great warrior and asks if, if you would take him with you. Uh, how truthful is this guy being? He's a very young man, uh, you know, maybe 15, um, definitely uh, skinny, 
you know, hasn't, hasn't, uh, you know, grown into his, his man's body. And, um, so, you know, truthfulness about him wanting to come with you, you can roll insight. I mean, I feel like... Basically, I want to know if he's trying to, like, if he's actually going to be, you know, trying to work against us or helping us. Intent and all that. I mean... Correct. his parents letting him go? Does he have parents? Uh, as you, you know, ask him about you know, his parents, he tells you that he has been a, uh, apprentice, a ward of one of the farmers ever since his parents had, uh, died of the, of the wasting disease. Um, and, and so he's been just working on the farm for like, you know, nine years or whatever. And, he just dreams of of running away and and being a great warrior like they sing about in the in the tales and epics uh you know That's, so that is a very honorable motive good sir do you, I, okay player question um roland is not a a different player character correct right okay npc Gotcha. Um, I don't know. I mean, I my character can think of a half dozen stories, one way or the other. Uh, do we need I'm another? Not, do we want an, an, another NPC with us? I mean, if if he wants to rescue life, and I like the people, boy. That's on him. Does he have any weapon? I mean, Alodi is basically just going to be somewhat trying to be reasonable with this. Mm-hmm this man like do you have training do you have weapons do you think you can do well in this battle because we will be going up against some tough really tough enemies and we don't want you to die i i have uh made my my own shield and he shows you like it's it's rough but it's a shield and and um i have my my father's short sword that that uh you know i was allowed to keep because the farming couple that that took me in you know yeah they made me work and everything but i mean everybody here works um you know they were nice they let me keep my father's sword and so i've always dreamed of you know taking his sword and and going and slaying a dragon okay um, when I rolled insight, did I get the sense that he is being truthful in this, or does he have some other intent in mind? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I know that, uh, you know, there are DMs who, who would like try to sneak an NPC into the party just to try to like screw you over and all of that. Um, and I'm not saying that I would never do that given a more, uh, mystery, you know, kind of quest, but with a simple, um, you know, we're at a farming village, we're going to go stop a goblin army or try to, or whatever, you know, I, I really wouldn't, uh, try to sneak an NPC in there. Who's just there to sabotage you. Uh, unless, like, something would have given you a clue to that or whatever. So, to answer your question, he's being honest. I like the boy. Cool. Let's bring him along. Uh, well, All right. let's, let's, can we put him through his paces really quick? Maybe, you know, oh, just yes, see how right. well he handles a weapon? Yeah, that's right. He had, he had been asked, you know, can he fight? So he, he shows you his shield and he shows you his sword and he says that he hasn't really, you know, been able to, to train because nobody here is, is a warrior. Um, he, he, he's strong for his, you know, weight and size. He's pretty skinny. Uh, but working on the farm, he's, he's at least strong. Uh, and he shows you that he, he has a really strong swing 
with the with the sword but all he's ever swung at and stabbed at is you know bales of hay and and stuff like that so um he doesn't uh know how to how to hold the sword properly um it's like in boxing like you might be strong and you might even know how to throw a punch but does that mean that you know how to hold your hands in the correct position to be able to get your punch off before your opponent gets his punch off? You know, can you keep your hands in position to be able to defend yourself against your opponent's punches? There's a whole lot more to boxing than just having a good punch. And so the same with sword fighting, he's got a really great swing of the sword. No question. He's got that down, but, he definitely lacks the fundamentals of you know how to stand how to how to hold himself and and all of that for the maximum effectiveness with with the with the sword is somebody uh got their mic on i'm getting some feedback no, no change here. No. We have nothing but positive feedback here. Ha. <laughs> ha. Uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, you know, Roland definitely is a uh, low-level NPC. Um, if you guys size him up, you know, this is not – this is not a knight or a champion or a veteran or, you know, somebody who who can contribute significantly. I believe there is no way to earn the skills without doing it. And that this is an opportunity for him to learn so he can protect his people in the future. Let's bring him out. Let's do it. All right, Bob. All right. It sounds, All right. Sounds something noble, though. I'm... A loading story that he's going to get. All right. Now going to trade him up. Let's now and come back. Now they'll trade him up. All right. And I'll do my best to help you during your training with these goblin invaders. So we are, we are resolved as a party. We are off. Off with with All the right. NCP. Roland. Yes. <laughs> yes, Roland. Roland the really, really, really great. Roland the rugged. So, Dwarf, what do you think of the stars that we should be able to consider before we head out on our next mission? Mm -hmm. Well, we should make sure to be cautious with these goblinoids. They, as, oh, you have a goblin order. You think Hansen should be? No, as in the, as in the, as the goblins with the. the remember how they fought? Yes. To, we should be make sure to be cautious with like the long range fighters, and as Pesci has shown in the past, that it's it is a viable strategy to duck. <laughs> Thank you, Pesci. Um, can I refill my ammunition before we head out? Yes. Awesome. How much will it cost for a quiver of arrows? I do believe that a bundle of 20 arrows is one gold piece. One gold for a bundle of 20? I do believe that's the price. Look it up in the PHB. Yeah, that looks like yeah, need... cool. I'll fix it. And how are we with food? Well, this is not a place well, to be able to restock with with, uh, with, with uh, that. He's just he's just getting arrows because uh, he basically needs them. Yeah, 
everybody else has stock in the group point. Do we need to stop someplace for any food before we go out here, guys? There's nowhere to stop. We don't have enough time. We can go to the best of these rooms and maybe afterwards we can get Excellent. I'm, I'm not anyway. Okay, Indeed. so we put you guys on the map. And then we add Roland. Roland, 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 and then uh while we're while we're waiting for me to get this guy on here you guys can go ahead and oh, you guys can go ahead and roll for initiative uh, i got kicked off so give me a second all Uh, do you hear us, DM? Yes. Uh, um, ah, interesting. So, DM, I do not see the um, my Bardic Inspiration points slots on my uh, Actions tab anymore. One second. All right. Uh, so now you need me to take a look at your. I did. Right here. Or a cool right here. I only see me, and I only see, uh, Lucy. I see everybody. I see everybody. Oh, 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 I Eighteen six six nine five to map trail. Got it. Okay, I see where we're at. Yep. Can you find that from on their table? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Look at that. We're on a trail. A trail that looks somewhat similar to the original trail that we. Uh, a little bit, yeah. The nature of the uh, the nature of the environment. That we're in. No. Um. Lucy's role inspiration. Okay, we all we all have we all have yes. We are all ready to go. We're gonna encounter something. All right. We're make it our fear. So uh as you guys are traveling on the road towards uh Brotnabyod, Roland is you know telling you guys about is you know, life growing up here, and he tells you all about how uh, Ryon, the uh, halfling paladin, had come through not that long ago and helped them because there was a really old half-blind owl bear who had uh, been ravaging the village, and um, right 
as he's telling you that, everybody rolls for perception. Oh. Oh, I sense nothing. I am literally nothing. I'm distracted. I'm off in my own world. Yeah, she's in a great spot, though. Actually, Oracle knows that what's going on. All right. So, uh, as you guys are listening to Roland tell this story, uh, Pesci and Gorakul, you hear a stick snap behind you. And as you turn to look, you see a huge hulking bear-like figure covered in feathers uh standing just at the top of of the hill behind you staring down at you this angora cool sort of looks towards it and says i don't suppose that is the owlbear Roland Roland says no the other one was was old and and infirmed run Uh oh wait can I talk to this thing This isn't What do we know about owl bears DM Uh you oh, can roll bear. you can roll nature to see what you would know I would think you know I'm a friend of mine An owl bear. I'm a bugbear. Why wouldn't we be friends? We're like half brothers. You think so? They're both bears. I don't know, but usually in uh, in the tales that I tell, this is where we have an unfortunate surprise attack. So, I think we should move. Uh, so what what you would know about uh, owl bears is that they are voracious omnivores who uh, eat almost anything in an area and are essentially apex predators uh against all but the most powerful of monsters um you know like wyverns and and stuff like that can displace them but otherwise a a owl bear is uh more than enough of a challenge to drive off even small clans of kobolds and stuff like that. So oh, the thing is, like, we're on limited time. We need to get to the thing on time. But there's no way we're going to be able to run away from this thing. So I think we just got to go for it. Um, how far away is this thing from us? Like, you know, 60 to 100 feet. Okay. And how fast can these things run? Fast. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think I think we are going to have to do a dramatic uh, fight scene here, folks. <laughs> Roland, this is your time to to witness the, the glorious might <laughs> of a bugbear warrior. <laughs> All right. Well, Pesci, you're up. Okay. Um. It is 60 feet away. Um, Is it on the map? We can't see it. Yeah, it's it's back behind you guys. Okay. Um, Should we get to better a better strategic position? It's behind us, as in it's behind me, the way we came. Yes. Okay. Um, All right. I'm gonna step back a ways. As I was saying, this is the time to witness the mighty fi- fighting prowess of oh, it's there. Okay. Of a uh, bugbear warrior as I step back to here. Everybody get behind me and you can come at me. And then I ready 
beasts can understand can be influenced, right? So my vicious mockery should work. So I will ready, I'll prepare my vicious mockery for when the bugbear comes in to attack us. Okay. And let me end my turn. Okay. Uh, I would just in general. Yeah, I was gonna say you you you're next to me. Everybody else get behind us because you know right now I'm I'm your I'm your best move up here. Yeah, just move next to me to my left. Sorry, to my right. Left as you're facing the map. West. West. Over here. Well, hold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on over there. Then you can ready attack if you want. Uh, I can ready an attack? Okay. How do I do that? So what is that? Uh, well, where is this creature? I'm not clear on where the... Oh, back, back here. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's not really can... that close. Yeah, so I would probably ready my um, bow and arrow. Yes? Yes, you're ready your bow. If he comes within 30 feet of you, you shoot. Within range. Do I need to do that? No. Anything? Okay. Well, it range? is within bow range. Are there any bonus action spells that might be useful? Like, you, you said you had Hunter's Mark, right? I have Hunter's Mark, and I also have Reign of Claws. The problem is you're going to use that, and you're going to need it for the next time through. I would just, if, if you got time, I'd shoot an arrow. So you can do the move and shoot the arrow? Yes. Yeah, so just load it up and shoot it. Target him. Uh, a bonus, you, you do also have a bonus action as well as a movement and regular action. Right, but without a thing to do with the bonus action, it's really just dangling. Oh, no, 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 no. Bring up my things again. I couldn't move it to do action. Mm -hmm. I need to target it, but... Control. Why are you using it? Yeah, because they, they reset his, uh, her uh, hit points. Okay. Now to hit it with the longbow. Uh, just click the this way. Yeah. Oh. Hit. Yeah. Roll damage. Your arrow flies through Fly. the air. It strikes the owl bear as it's still on the top of the hill, wounding it. Are you talking? Yeah. Oh, man, that was really quiet. Okay. I only just barely heard it. That's why I asked like that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear anything. I just I, I heard like a, a faint whisper. So what were you saying? Um, so I was asking if I move back here, if I can still hit it with the bell. Hit it with what? Which spell? Which spell do you want to throw? I just said a spell. Most of my spells are the same. Uh, well, like for example, um, if you're trying to hit it with a uh, ray of frost, oh, that is sixty-two. Oh, frostbite sixty. Uh, all, all of them are sixty. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, it is further than sixty feet. Okay. So theoretically, I should not. No, no, I would move. I would move, but you can move back one one square. Just, why don't I just do it with the attack and then move? Yep, 
Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. So friend. I'm going to go back to where I was, um, and then I'll use Ray of Frost. Or you could use one of the... Uh... Nope, I'm going to use Ray of Frost. That's right, you tell him. No, 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 19. You strike the yeah. owl bear with your icy blue ray as ice begins to form on its feathers. Uh, feathers, though, are remarkably good at regulating uh, temperature, so it's not that hurt. And then you step back, yep. Well done, Elodie. And in fact, uh, you get another point of inspiration because, um, well, I'm the DM, but also be, <laughs> but, but also because you you had it, you know, exactly right. Make your attack, then move back. And uh, I like tactics, so you did good. Get a point of inspiration. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to move up here. And I'm going to prepare an attack. Uh, see if I can draw him to me. Uh, that's actually in that's actually in the middle of four squares, though. So uh, you gotta you gotta pick one. There you go. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna prepare my. Um, uh, so I'm gonna prepare my faultless longsword. I'm gonna you know if he comes within five feet of me, I'm gonna attack him. I get a swing, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Off we go. All right. So uh, the owl bear does indeed charge in and charges in at the at the you know closest creatures, which is all of you guys. Uh, that does trigger, of course, um, pesky. And also pesky. pesky. Something smells a little fishy here. Uh, all right, let me target Z Albear, and I will use my vicious mockery oh. as I also say that it's. Fur, or its its feathers are. Oh wow! My feathers are fabulous, and you know it. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of insulting, I'm actually uh, complimenting it, and I yeah. don't know why. <laughs> you, you, you can step hey. off my gown. I have nothing wrong to say about your fabulous coat of feathers. <laughs> uh, damn right. And. I get, I get my, my attack, correct? Yes, and now, and now the bug bear gets to, gets to attack the owl bear in bear on bear, bear. violence. Oh my goodness! One. Oh no! Faultless. Wow, so that was pretty good. Damn. Oh. Damn. Damn. Yes. <laughs> the owl heavily wounded as you as you strike it with your longsword and it the blow is so massive that it knocks it to the ground and so now it is on the ground see and, and i don't, don't yeah I, I mean I, I did doing. say that we will be witnessing the uh the bugbears fight at warriors fighting prowess, so. Oh my goodness, he's gonna be unbearable. Yeah. <laughs> unbearable. <laughs> unbearable. And then uh, I, I just remembered that if I was 60 feet away from you guys that I have just enough movement to stand up, so I stand up. And then a secondary owl bear. Uh, this one larger and more powerful appears. It charges and gets to here. Go ahead. 
Gorakul. Well, I'm ready for him. Gorakul says he's that there's a second one, and sort of like David and surrenders. No, I'm thinking. I'm going to change into my starry form, aka the archer's the archer's might, and and is go I'm going to be targeting the owlbear with my starry starry the the damaged one. Is, is that where you're trying to move to, uh, Elodie? I, I, oh, okay. Yeah, you're good. I think that was an accidental thing. Yep. Also, okay. can I can I move without in getting an attack thing? No. Okay, so I'll just attack it with my starry form. Okay, but that's a ranged attack, so that's at disadvantage. Okay, then I'll sort of undo that, and instead, I'll use my... I'll... I'll use my breath weapon. Okay. Oh, he succeeded, so he only takes half damage, and your fiery breath just singes some of his feathers rather than uh, igniting him in an inferno of pain like you hoped for. Come on, Rollins, kill this thing. Okay. Uh, since I am still sucking with my sword, I just have a you know a club now that I'm gonna attack him with. Just do what the owlbear. Just do what the bugbear did. <laughs> yeah, smack. Bonk. All right, you guys should uh, turn your attention to the new uh, owlbear here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Tasha's is going to be useless. Um, I can potentially put the one owlbear that's on you three to sleep. So that way we can turn around and focus on the other one. But it's possible that it could wake up. Yeah, I would, I would, I, I mean, anything, I just go after the new one. I, I think my, I have a good shot at killing him here next time around. When, when Pesci says something about putting him to sleep, Zarash is like, yeah, that's what I'm already on. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Permanent sleep. Okay. Um, all right. I want to make a small distraction then, um, for this other owlbear. I basically, what my goal is, is I want to distract it. So it might not be able to get to us to attack us this turn. Um, so I want to... Um, these rocks that are right behind it in a spot that it can't really see very well. Um, I want to uh, make a... I want to sound up here like as if uh, one of us is coming around the corner to um, engage with it. Okay. So there's these rocks that are on the other side here. So we can, you know, I want to basically get distracted for a turn. Yes. And you're using... Uh, minor, minor illusion. Yep, minor illusion. So yeah. For that... Oh, there's not a save for that? Okay. No, um, I, I, there's not really a save. I'm just trying to distract it. Maybe it's a D, like it should be a DC check against my spell casting or tricking it or something. It's yeah. like a deception roll. And so the owl bear uh, turns around to look. Uh, he grants advantage on attacks right now. Okay. That's still pretty good. Um, and then Pesci will. Uh, is this a cliff? What is this behind to my right here or left rather? 
pile of rocks? That's a cliff, yes. A cliff? Yes. All right, I want to try to scramble over to here, if that's possible. Yeah, you got you to gotta roll a climb. Uh, that might not be possible then. <laughs> it's um, only because you're so short. Hmm? Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not going to be a good idea for me. My athletics is not the greatest. So I will just step back a little bit further. Or I guess I'll step over to here. Okay. All right. Um, okay. And that will be my turn. Let me end it. Yeah, so the second owlbear, I distracted it long enough to give you an advantage on attack. Thank you, Pesci. Appreciate it. Uh, DM, I had a question. How can I use my point of inspiration? I'm not uh, sure. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Uh, I'm sorry that I had not made that clear sooner. Um, so points of inspiration. Learning curve is a little steep, too. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. It's all good. Uh, and again, I apologize for not having already made this clear earlier because, you know, obviously you guys have had them piling up for a little bit now. Um, so points of inspiration can be used either when you make an attack or basically any other D20 roll to give yourself advantage on that roll. And so you get to roll two D20s and keep the better result. Uh, now it works just like any other time you have advantage to where if you already have disadvantage it would just set it to normal then um, uh, but still you can use it to take away disadvantage on a roll or give yourself advantage on a roll uh, either way it's it's going to be a huge benefit to you okay so i was thinking i would use one of my points no 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 okay no, no, no. So everyone's saying no, so I'm not going to do that. Save it to the bigger battle. Let's Save it to the bigger battle. Okay, got it. Did I... Wait, I'm trying to change my... Target. Just deselect the first, the second one. Did I deselect? De yep, did I you did. Perfect. Oh, nope. Now you got to select the other one again. Not the other one. The uh, That one, yes. Perfect. So, uh... Turning <laughs> towards the distracted owl bear, Lucy lets loose an uh, arrow, but it misses. It, it basically like hits the rock that the owl bear is by. Alright guys, it's okay. I'm gonna... Okay, so you managed to strike the owl bear with your with your knife. So deal the damage for the knife part of it. Was that the knife part? Um, yeah, piercing magic. Ooh. Correct. Yeah, you did perfect. Uh, don't mind me. Uh, I'm just not used to you dealing so much damage. <laughs> That's fair. I'm not either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but then he saved versus the other one. So let me uh, just reread it. I think it's half damage then if he saves, or is it no damage? I forget. I, uh, no damage is for the con... Damage. Yep, yep. Yeah. So no damage, sadly, because he saved. Um, and then that was a uh, level one or two ice knife? That was level one. Oh. Okay, so make sure you... Yep, there you go. You got it. Perfect. Well done, Elodie. Yay. Okay. Now for me to... That was our... Uh, do I have advantage because he's prone, or he got up? He got up. He got up. Okay, so I'm just rolling regularly. 
Oh. Yeah, roll your regular yeah. crit. Two in a row. Look at that. Correct. Splatter. As you stab and slash at the owl bear with your refined, faultless greatsword, uh, you finally manage to deal enough damage to bring the beast down. It lies on the on the ground, bleeding. Wow. I, I've had two good rolls today. I think I'm done. All right. Um, You're showing off the roll. I'm showing off the roll, and roll. That's how you do it. Um, I you... mean, yes. Sing me a yes. song. Yes. I will in a moment. <laughs> Once this other one is done. Um, do I still have a movement, DM? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna get myself over twenty feet, fifteen feet. How much do I got? Uh, thirty feet. Uh, that's where I'm going. Go right here. Okay. I'm ready to take damage. The owl bear fails its death save and lies there dying. This owl bear. Come on. Have at me. It does. <laughs> it does. Oh, is it a, dis is it a disadvantage because it's so confused or no? No, it grants advantage to attacks, but not disadvantage to its attacks. Gotcha. You missed me anyway. <laughs> oh, no, hit me anyway, damn it. <laughs> Claws didn't hit, but the beak hit. And the beak manages to deal a glancing blow as you get out of the way before it can sever your your uh arm at the elbow um so really quick i wanted to use cutting words there for that second attack is that something i could have used or no it's a reaction uh it is it is something that like normally you could use but this is this is an owl bear, so uh, I'm not sure that cutting words would have the effect that that you would you would want it to. Uh, I'm just checking out their intelligence. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty low. So okay. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know that your uh, cutting words or vicious mockery would quite work as well as as what you would hope. Um, I haven't made a ruling on that, but you know, if if you want to try it, it's it's sort of too late. The attack already got resolved. Um, gotcha. But there was something that I would have liked to have done that. No, um, no, 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 nineteen. No problem. Your your starry your starry uh, arrow launches at the owl, owl bear. Dealing a good amount of radiant damage as it bursts into a shower of of comets. Behold the power of the stars. A Roland is going to move up by Zarash Get and there, attack. Boy. Get him with a club. Club him. There we go. Yeah, boom. Um, Take that. <laughs> Speak softly and carry a big old stick. It was on mute. Um, okay. What happened to our little bit slayer? Uh, Bitey Slayer. Bitey Slayer is is uh hanging out with um um Scout. Scout. No, not Scout. Uh uh the the other one. Uh, why why Alan. am I? Uh, uh Ryan. 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 Yes. Ryan. Ryan. Got it. Okay. Um. Uh, 
Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. So, I will. My target now. I'm not targeting the Albert. Here we go. There we go. All right. Now I'm targeting it. All right. Uh, I will attempt to do another vicious mockery. Um, something about how um, Zarush is makes a better bear than this owl bear. Yes, I'm the better. Uh, so definitely a better bear. <clears throat> and then clear this, and I target Zarush, and I say. Now, Zarash, now's the time for your dramatic feat of strength as he gives Bardic inspiration to Zarash. Nice. And that will be my turn. No, uh, uh, how about Hunter's Mark? No, no, don't use it. Because yeah, we're about to go into a big battle. Big battle. Save, your, save your, your thing. I, I can kill this. So, player. should I move? No, I don't no, know. Boom, done. Okay. Let right. fly. I'm kind of a boring. No, not true, man. Last week, two weeks ago, you had the, the hail of thorn thing. It was like, it was awesome. Your arrow strikes the owl bear in the shoulder, heavily wounding it as it claws at the annoying. Uh, projectile that is causing it pain. The ray of frost manages to pierce the owl bear's feathery protection, and, and you can see it visibly uh, reel back from the biting, like, daggers of the ice digging into it. Um, do I get to roll advantage, then? Is that my... Because of uh, what uh, Pesci just did? Well, it'll, it'll automatically grant you advantage on the attack. Uh, and then also, I already set it up to where your 1d6 Bardic Inspiration will be rolled with your attack here. Gotcha. Got it. So. Obviously. Probably didn't need it, but I wanted to make it epic. It was pretty good roll anyway. <laughs> it was epic, but then the damage was less than. Yeah, less than epic. But that's okay. We're going to get under. Oh no, I'm failing oh, no. all my death saves. <laughs> Yay! Boo! Well, I uh, am going to go ahead and uh, find out if I have the wisdom. Yes, I do. To disengage and run away. That draws an attack of opportunity, doesn't it? Disengage. Disengage. And I run into the woods where you guys lose sight, at least temporarily. And... Coracle. After seeing the uh, that the uh, the other bugbear has a, has left. Bugbear? No, owl bear. And sorry. And after seeing the other bugbear leave, he sneaks up behind the one that's still here to stab him. <laughs> Damn! I do not appreciate the sarcasm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm. Gorakul sort of walking up to Zerash saying, you did well, and cast Cure Wounds on Zerash, healing him with the powers of the stars. And as tiny stars form around your hands, 
they enter into Zarash's wounds that, you know, magically close and heal. And after that... And after that, Zarash says, Alrighty then, let's get going. Uh, I said Gorakul says that. Roland says... So as we are walking along, uh, Pesci is strumming out a new, a new, a new tune on his uh, lute um, about Zarish, the bugbear, and something about you know what kind of a warrior can take on two owl bears, and apparently it's a bugbear. Uh, Roland, before you guys, you know, leave. Uh runs over to the fallen owl bear and grabs one of the large feathers uh as a souvenir. Ah. It's good to get a trinket now and then. We should also probably um get some meat off this owl bear for the travel and any other provisions we may be able uh, to use. Can I make a nature check to see if it is Healthy to uh, eat? Is it edible yeah. to uh, eat an owlbear flesh? Yeah, go ahead, roll. Uh, you know, it's, it's like eating a half brother. What's the deal? Am I not good enough for you? Uh, so what what you know is that uh, owl bears are um quite literally, basically half owl half bear and uh neither meat is particularly good per se uh you will get some hunters who you know will tell you how you know bear meat is this or that but the truth of it is that bear meat is incredibly tough gamey uh you know meat it's it's not um you know succulent tender rabbit or or anything like that and um owls uh tend to be pretty stringy and and you know not really uh the type of birds that you would want to eat either so at the end of the day the meat is uh palatable though not particularly appetizing uh but more so than anything, it's, you know, butchering it and getting uh, it that is going to be a problem. Yeah. And Gorakul just sort of lectures everybody about that, saying that it is a predator. So in, in true statement, the meat is not as tasty as a prey. Okay. So is there anything else we may be able to take off this thing oh, for yeah. our, to oh, yeah. use? Yeah, I, in fact, Oracle, with his with his nature role, would be able to tell you, you know, that there are uh, very um, power, not power, uh, I shouldn't say very powerful. There are magical items that can be created using the fur and feathers oh of the owl bear and so harvesting the owl bear uh skin uh, and feathers could could yield an owl bear cloak or something like that and then also uh it's it's more of like a uh novelty or or whatever you want to call it but the claws of an owl bear are kind of like um, shark teeth or or something like that, where you know you can get somebody to give you a copper piece or so for them, you know. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, anyway. let's let's get that stuff off and be on our merry way as Pesci is strumming along his new ditty. So yeah, and Lucy can uh, help like uh, skin it, like, get the yeah. bolt. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say was somebody's going to have to skin it. So that would be a um, survival. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, use an inspiration point. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, and no worries. I I remember our thing. So uh, I was just kind of getting everything tied up in a neat little bow here. Uh, so as Lucy is is skinning the owl bear, it's not that Lucy lacks the skill. Lucy has the skill to skin this owl bear, but you are interrupted. As you hear the goblin horde approaching, you have to abandon your your kill and either stand and fight or make haste to Broughton of Yod. Which will it be? This, this My is suggestion cool. is... Oh, sorry, go. I would suggest to, like, get to hiding... Mm, yes, I agree. Burton Bird would be a very prime spot for hiding right now. No, I mean, like, since this is, this is the uh, horde that is attacking Burton Bird. Aren't we supposed to be going to reinforce that place? Yeah, let's run. Okay. Yeah. Is that what you were going to ask, Pesci? Yeah, I thought we were going there to reinforce it or to assist them. So let's get moving. Okay. Yeah, agreed. So as you hear the drums and horns of and stomping feet of the approaching goblin horde, you quickly abandon your kill and, and make haste to Broughton Abode. Will our adventurers be able to save the small town from the ravages of the goblin raiders? Will they meet the same fate as the owl bear? We will find out next week on Dragons of War. I want to thank you guys for playing. I want to thank anyone who's watching. And as always, everyone, good, good gaming. Good gaming.